vibe. My audience is a whole vibe. From the way y'all dress, yes, I'm talking about you. From the way y'all dress to the way y'all dance, the way y'all bring all of that beautiful energy all up in this place, it just lifts up my spirits. Thank you for that. The way you welcome me in. You make me feel at home at home. Baby, there is nobody like y'all, and I want to thank you for all of that love and all of that energy. It lifts me up every time, y'all, so thank you so much for that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, let's get into my mug. I want to thank y'all for sending me all of these fabulous mugs, too. I see y'all been listening, because when I call, y'all answer, and it's been amazing. The latest one, do you want to see it? I hope you like it, honey. It says divine, but you got to see how it looks. Hold the line. Y'all getting more and more creative. Do you see this mug? Gil Rogers sent this. Look at that. Now, if you don't see, if you don't see it, this is my type of mug. It got a heel for, for the handle on it. You see that handle on there? Now, 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 now. You, yeah, you hear that? They said, oh. <laughs> I'm thinking I need a shoe like this. What y'all think? Right? Let me share this note from Miss Gail Rogers. And this is a beautiful note. She says, Dear Lady J. Hood. All right, yes, ma'am. I would like to toss a shoe to salute you for being divinely you. God has exalted you to become a global influencer because you live your Christian beliefs boldly and unapologetically. I love, ain't that beautiful? How the J. Hud Show is committed to taking the audience to a happy place. That, I, could, I feel like I know you, ma'am. Thank you so much for this beautiful note. It really touched my spirit. Many continued blessings and kind regards. Gail Rogers. Thank you, Miss Gail, for this. Let's get into this even further. How many of you used to love watching Saturday morning cartoons? Oh my God. Let's see, what was your good, good cartoon? Like, remember the Smurfs? Anybody remember the Smurfs? Or oh, what about Inspector Gadget? Yeah. Inspector. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, oh, oh, and baby, ain't nobody saying like this cartoon. Them doggone chipmunks, they will sing you. Damn! I couldn't wait till they came on so I could get to sing it with them, learn the song. Them harmony notes were so tight, and they was just too doggone cute. That was some of my fun, fun was ooh, ooh. And I feel like we kind of live in this same time. What about the Jetsons? Anybody love the Jetsons? Anybody? Mm-hmm. I used to love the really old school cartoons like Tom and Jerry. Oh my God. And if you know, like I love, uh, when I was a little girl, my first love was King Kong and I used to kiss the TV screen. Well, y'all, my other love, my other love, when I tell you my school notebook, my, I used to have my own mug of this character, my uh, comforter in my room, my pencils. Even when I went to college, okay, my whole dorm room was Tasmanian Devil, honey. <laughs> Baby, I love me some Taz. <laughs> Is there anybody in the house that used to watch? Oh, what about the Flintstones? <laughs> All right, how many of you used to love watching Saturday morning cartoons? Look, it, you, you can't just watch the cartoon without that bowl of cereal. Did you have your good old bowl of cereal when you watched the cartoon? Don't, yeah, you know we was all kids before when you, like we used to sit up all the boxes and sit them around. You know, they create your little haven while you in the middle of the, don't act like y'all don't know this, okay? And then you had your big old bowl of, 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 of the pebbles like this. And you know, I like ice in my cereal. Y'all like ice in your cereal? I do. I don't want no warm milk. I need ice in the cereal. Don't act like you don't want none of my pebbles. I know you do. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Everything that we liked as kids is making its way back with a twist, even cereal. I remember the Fruity Pebbles, and now they have Pebbles Crunch with the rock star shaped pieces that crunch like <clears throat> when you eat them like this. Anybody like that dry cereal? <laughs> when you eat it, when you ain't had no milk? Don't act like y'all don't know that. Okay. 
I'm going to keep on chewing y'all hope tonight I'm eating my pebbles. Okay, to celebrate the new rock star shape, serial young and young musicians, Pebbles and the Jennifer Hudson Show are giving one lucky winner $5,000 towards their continuing music education. And I love that. To enter the contest, visit our website at jenniferhudsonshow.com slash pebbles, or you can follow the QR code at the bottom of the screen for more information. All right? I hope y'all are ready to keep on smiling because our first guests are making the world a much happier place. They are a father and daughter, YouTube sensation, Gracie's Corner. Take a look. The Phonic Song. Song. What sound does that letter make? Tell me. What sound does that letter make? Break it down, sound it out. Yeah, you heard. Put the sounds together, now we're reading words. A says Please welcome from Texas, Grayson and Javari. Okay, can you explain what Gracie's Corner is? Yeah, so it all started during the pandemic. Um, I was a college professor, and my, of course my kids were doing homeschool at the time because everyone was locked down. And while watching a lot of the content that they were watching, it really dawned on me, like, man, there's not much representation in the kids' space as far as, like, uh, the content that they're viewing. So we decided to be proactive and create our own. Wow. Did you realize what the impact that you were going to have and the inspiration that you've become? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you're the inspiration behind Gracie's Corner? Yes, ma'am. Yeah? I got a question for you. What do your cousins think? Well, my cousins, they're like, when I come back from like doing all these, these like busy things, they're like, oh, like, you, sh you should, when you go on there, you should be like this. Gracie's Corner, dun 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 dun. I love that. And, and, and you have like put a hip hop twist to the classic nursery rhymes, which is really amazing. I think that draws people in even more. Yeah. Was that the intention? Yeah, so when, I, when we came up with the whole concept, it was like, okay, here's an opportunity where we can create something intentional where children of, children of color are at the forefront. But at the same time, as most parents see when you listen to traditional kids' music, you almost want to, you know, you know, after, <laughs> after, and you, as a mom, you know. Oh, after, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it was like, okay, let's do something different. Let's tie, let's pull in some of the cool genres that yeah. we've grown to love and tie it in with the kids' content. That's and really smart. People have really loved it. Yeah because it draws the kids in when you bring in things that they are familiar with and used to, and it makes education extra fun, right? Exactly. When you say, yes. now, can I ask you, Miss Lady, what's your favorite part about, like, working with your dad? My favorite part about it is that I get to spend time with him with also learning things about my voice. Mm. Your voice as in, in your speaking voice, your singing voice, what do you mean? Like this. Oh! Listen up, you! So, did you sing before then, or like, is it did you just now discover like a new talent in yourself? So, like, I first started when I was like, well, well, when I was little, I had this like little Elsa microphone, and I'd be like, let it go, let it go. <laughs> I love it. This is so amazing. You're nominated for an NAACP Image Award and a Gears Choice Award. That is amazing. What is that like for you? Well, how it's like is that when he first told me, I was like, no, you're lying. <laughs> she was worried about the slime from Nickelodeon, so. <laughs> So you wasn't thinking about the word, uh, the the award. You were thinking about getting slimed. Well, I was. Exactly. Uh, well, I was also thinking about the award, but I, I'm also worried about my hair. Uh oh. <laughs> so yeah, that's a, I understand that. that. I totally get you. Your hair looks lovely, actually. Thank you. What's next for you two? Well, we got a lot of stuff in the pipeline now. Uh, for instance, the current content is just short, you know, three or four minute long videos, but. 
we're pushing to actually create a full-blown episode, like where people can find out more about Gracie, the parents, the grandparents, and just the whole vibe. Oh my goodness. Congratulations. Thank you. Oh my God, keep shining, all right? Right. We'll be right back. Everybody knows our first guest from movies like My Best Friend's Wedding and The Family Stone. Now he's starting in the brand new Scream movie. Please welcome Dorman Melroni. You have 16 projects coming out. Like, yeah, that's what I, yeah. That is yeah. amazing. I mean, all of those would be, some of them are even just one scene in an indie and stuff like that. I've always done a wide variety of different types of movies, and uh, just right now in this role, they, they added up um, to, to be a lot of stuff coming out. Do you travel? I mean, you travel a lot around the world, right? Do you ever forget where you are? Because I do. Sometimes I wake up and I'm like, where's the bathroom? Oh, like, yeah. do you ever get... In the hotel and you go the wrong way. <laughs> and before you know it, you're like, ah, the bathroom's over there. That definitely, but I've also had it where I'm wide awake. I'm driving along in some random rental car. <laughs> and I can't figure out r literally what state I'm in. Oh I my God. traveled all year, so I'd be driving in Arizona and I'd be thinking, am I in Ohio, <laughs> Georgia? Oh yeah, Arizona, Arizona. <laughs> I'm literally a little bit out of body sometimes from working so much. So um, I'm so blessed, I can't, be, we could do a whole show on that. Yes. But uh, one, one of the results of that is always being busy and away from home a lot. Mm -hmm. But um, boy, I sure love what I do. Uh, you must too, because you do it so well. Thank you. Beautiful singer, Thank you. actor. Thank you. And, and Thank now you. you got this going on, it's amazing. Thank you so oh, much it's for so that. It's so fun to watch you come along. Thank you, I appreciate that. And you've, you've been shooting in my hometown, Chicago. Yeah, well, I've worked, yeah? There, I've worked there a ton um, uh, over the years. Obviously, my best friend's wedding, we yes. hit like every location in that whole city. Oh, wow. I know. Did you have a favorite place where you shot it? Well, well, one of the scenes that everybody loves so much is on that boat, you know, the tour boat yes. on Chicago River. Oh, so place. we're floating along um, and shooting live. Um, uh, in the city with uh, oh people everywhere. In fact, they're on the bridges that we're going under. They have to cut because people are, how could you miss her, right? It's Julia. She's on the boat, they're yelling, Julia, Julia, they say, cut, cut, cut. <laughs> and then like the fourth take, we get to about the third bridge and somebody yells, Dermot. I'm like, yeah. Right? Like, yeah. Finally. They and see. it turns out it was one of my, yeah, one of my buddies. <laughs> I already knew him. He already knew I, you know, he already knew I was cool. <laughs> I love it. And you, and you know, I love O'Hare Airport. Like, oh, you well, shot there? Yeah, well, I sh we shoot that opening, one yes. of those opening scenes of Best Friends Wedding there. But I've always loved Chicago. I mean, O'Hare, I, um, I really, honestly, I, I tell myself it's the best airport. It is. Yeah, and I don't know if it is, but I tell myself that. So every time I go in there, I won't have any delay <laughs> of any sort. So I oh, I don't know about that. Manifest it. <laughs> It's a great place to be. Um, it, is. it is. You do a bit of everything. You're also a professional cello player? Yeah. Really? Yeah, I've been playing cello since uh, How long have you been playing? Since I was a kid. And it, it's the weirdest thing. Jennifer, you know what happened today? What? It was, uh, well, I booked your show and I was really excited and then I got a call to record today <laughs> for Michael Giacchino. He's a huge film scoring composer. Wow. But that's not even the half of it. Oh, look. That's not even the half of it. Um, it, it. It was right here in the scoring stage on Warner Brothers. Oh, so, so it works two out. Two jobs here today. Look at that! <laughs> oh my God! But I literally walked over and brought my instrument in with me because I can't leave it in the car. Well, Bach and Brian out, outside who watch your doors for you, so nice. Yes, they yes. were gonna look after it. I said, no, thank you, I'm gonna bring it in. That instrument there, are you seeing it? Yes. Yeah, I got that when I was uh, 15 years old. So it's the same one? Yeah. Oh my God, and, and so it's precious, so you, it's so you didn't even let it It's part of me, you know, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's amazing. That's, um, uh, thanks for letting me highlight it. It's one of I my best friends. I love that, right? so yeah. much. Yeah, incredible. Oh my goodness, okay. And, and you score, you play for movies? I play on, yeah, major blockbuster, bigger movies than I've been in, except for <laughs> now, because Scream 6 is coming out. But I played on all the Planet of the Apes, some of the Mission Impossibles, Incredibles 2, Coco, that incredible Central American soundtrack. Incredible um, experiences sitting in with the greatest players in the country, really, sitting in those rooms scoring uh, for, for our movies. Um, and, you know, if I can just take a moment, I think filmmakers should credit the musicians. This can be my own little, my own little Hello, point here. I'm with you. Right? Let them everybody know. that sings Let them and know. plays, just like everybody else that's a compositor, what Bless you guys. Music? What's a compositor? 
What is it? What We're glad it? that you work on our movies and you get credits. But what about the violinist? What right? about? So, sorry, yes. I took you off. No, no, no. Uh, you sit on the right couch, but that it becomes routine. We've been making movies for 120 years, and they're still not giving it up to the people who work so hard to learn how to play a flute it's that a they're so good that they'll play for your movie. Yes, right. and how important it is, it and matters. That's right, and so I, I make all my kids play instruments too. Sad. Oh, they do? Yeah. <laughs> do you play any other instruments? Uh, well, I play mandolin, some guitars, uh, but one of my kids plays harp, Jennifer. Do you know how to play a harp? Well, I could fake it. Okay, because <laughs> you're going to do better than me. This is the only television studio in Los Angeles that has a harp. Now let me see! And Jennifer has the only guy whose kid plays the harp okay. on her show. Okay, so will you, will you at least bless it? Because guess what? Ain't nobody ever played it. Will you try? <laughs> you will? Okay. Please, please, play us something. Watch this guy. I'm watching. Oh, my God. I'm so excited guys. about this. They even had it professionally tuned today. I was just going to tune it. But I don't really play. I just know where the notes are, right? I was at a party with my friends. I was at my therapist. I can give you his information. You can call to check if you want. And then I met Tara at that party where I'd taste someone. Unrelated. Do either of you have anyone that might want to target you? Not anyone he's still alive. God, that looks so good. We're back with them. No, Roni, okay. In the new movie screen. Yeah. Was it fun? Was it like shooting screen? Oh, incredible. I had such a good time making this oh. movie. I know it's about, you know, murderous mayhem. <laughs> but it was a wonderful experience. It was really incredible. This, uh, I joined now the reboot. Uh -huh. So they already know each other. They're best friends. Right. Melissa Barrera, Jenna Ortega, and the rest of this amazing cast that, uh, you know what? I feel like I'm. Uh, you know, I'm in the popular crowd this time. <laughs> <laughs> Where they invited th this yes. guy to, to hang out with them, see how cool they are? Yes. Um, so I felt that the whole time. And we all had one tiny little green room. We're like twice as close as this and just asking, just personal, incredible. And we made this horrifying and hilarious hit movie. Mm, so, yes, hit. Amazing. That's for amazing sure. Amazing experience for me. Unlike any other movie I've ever done. I was going to ask that. Like, how different is it from a well, non-scary movie? Well, not even that. This is already, I just never been in a franchise or a sequel yeah. or anything. So it's kind of like they already have their audience. They've already solved right. all the problems. Now they're just pumping out really hilarious, scary movies. Mm. So to be invited at this stage was really Really awesome. That was nice of them to get me on after it was successful. <laughs> uh, you have two teenagers at home? I do, Do yeah. you get any cool points with them since you're in the movie? You know what? I, I have not been cool until just right about now. <laughs> it it took, took me 14 and a half years to, be, to get cool, and I think it's because of Scream. Uh, uh, are you worried about the, the boys and the dating and all of that? Uh, I don't know. I think, yeah. Uh, no. To be honest, no? well, I don't know. The easy answer is, oh yeah, and you're gonna have to worry and all that. But I don't know. We brought them up right, and they're gonna know how to look out for themselves. Trust the teacher. And you know, there's also a more respectful vibe in yes. the world out there. It's maybe harder to connect with people person to person. That is true. So nice to be here today to do that. Mm -hmm. Even two, a year and a Thank half you. ago to be on a Zoom. You are and, so right. Yeah. So really, this means a lot to me. And I heard I you just joined Instagram. I did. What's that like for you? With your well, dog, you got a picture. I, oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what? Can I be honest uh -huh. about Instagram? Yes, yeah, what's your thing? It's very potent, and it goes right into your brain, and then you, like, want to be involved in something, and obviously it's not even really real. I, I detected that right away. <laughs> <laughs> I play a detective in Scream, so I'm thinking along the lines, like, how's this going to be? And um, I'm not sure I like that feeling. But, you know, like the studio was saying, you got to post something... Um, that's personal, so they don't think it's just the studio pumping out the right. ads. Because they want to know it's you. They want to know it's me. So this this is my first attempt, and I said, is it scary enough for you? <laughs> Cause, yeah. Because it's a chihuahua. So. <laughs> that's Posey. She's my queen. That, I, oh, I yeah. love it. Yeah. That is adorable. Okay, well, I think we should take a picture for your Instagram. 
Can, uh, can I help you out a little bit? Yeah, I, I right. use it. I only have, you know, I mean, Valor, it's bring not a oh, contest. Alex, yes. It's not like really a popularity contest, except it sure feels like one, doesn't it? <laughs> so we're going to take so this what? picture. Oh, God, and wow. then... Does this mean maybe we should, um, you know what you do is to, to, um, direct mail, mail it to me. What's no, that? Oh, yeah, like... No, or, um, no, uh, where it just... You mean a DM? No, I don't mean a DM. I mean, oh, airdrop it. You airdrop it. Otherwise, I'm going to get your cell phone number, and I'm going to be driving you crazy like, Jennifer, when are you playing next? When can I be on your show? <laughs> and then you could even talk to people like you're talking to me, but then it would be Snapchat. Uh, right. So, okay, we're going to look here, yeah, and we're going to smile. You ready? A lot to learn, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then you put more oh and more pictures God. up. Then you'll have a whole following on Instagram, and then you'll be even the cooler dad. And then I'm going to airdrop this picture to you. So but will nice. you come back and see us? I can't wait. Thank and you so gonna much. And you're going to bring the cello, and you're going to play the harp. You're going to sing, you're going to I will. I promise Let's you. Let's make a date. Let's do that. Whoa, Spring wow. Six is in theaters right now. We'll be right back. Hey, all right, everybody. Class, class, attention, attention. We're about to do some learning. Our next guest is the host of the new series, The Future with Hannah Fry. Y'all take a look. I'm Professor Hannah Fry, a mathematician and writer. I study patterns in human behavior, artificial intelligence, and the algorithms that dominate our lives. I get nervous about this. Now I want to know where we are all headed. Because our future doesn't just happen, we make it. And you can go out and find it if you know where to look. Please welcome Dr. Hannah Fry. Thank you for being here, oh, Miss. Thank Hannah. you for having me. Oh, what a treat. My God, this is amazing. Okay, you're a professional mathematician. Yeah. Tell me what you love most about math. Okay, so I fully accept that uh, most people's experience of math at school was uh, maybe traumatizing. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I, I, I accept that. <laughs> but the thing is, is that I think that the, the math that you learn at school is different from how it feels to be a real mathematician. For me, doing math, it's like a, a, a portal to a playground for the soul. Like, that's the best way that I can describe it. Because what you're learning when you're in school is like all the building blocks that you need to be able to, I don't know, to, to finally sing with the subject. Um, there was once somebody described it as um, doing really, really high level math. It's as though you are kind of burrowing through this really thick brush and you can't see where you're going. It's like thicket and, and leaves everywhere. And then you turn a corner and in a moment you realise that you're in this beautifully manicured garden where everything is laid out just perfectly and you're there discovering it. No one's been there before you and that's really, I think, how it feels. You can suddenly see everywhere that you've been before and all of the places that you struggled. You're so passionate about it. This is amazing. <laughs> OK, I heard that you have mad tips to help find love. Uh, yeah. Tell us a, a couple. <laughs> OK, so here's my theory, right? My theory is that you can apply a, a mathematical way of thinking uh -huh. to basically everything, right? That's, that's, that's my theory. And so I, um, you know, as a mathematician, right, when I was dating, I obviously tried to optimise my own dating life. I tried to use my, my superpower in order to, uh, to get the best possible partner. Um, and so I, I put it all together because I kind of wanted to prove, right, that even when you have something like love, which feels very far away from equations, mm -hmm. even in that situation, you have patterns in the, the number of people that you date in your lifetime. You have patterns in which photographs do well on, you know, internet dating profiles. And all of that you can you can look at through a mathematical eye. Y'all following it? <laughs> oh my God! Okay, what other math tips do you have for relationships? Okay, so one of the good ones um, that you can look at is how many people you should date before you decide to settle down. Okay. Oh. Okay. So there is actually a way to do this mathematically and work out the best possible strategy, right? So what you should do uh -huh. in theory is uh, you should say, right, let's say you start dating when you're about 15, in, okay. in seriousness, and you want to be settled down by the time you're 35, say. What you should do is for the first 37% of your dating life, you should just basically reject everybody. <laughs> 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 Don't take anyone too seriously. Have a nice time. You know, just, like, get to know yourself and the world. And then, after that time period has passed, right, after that 37% of time has passed, then, to settle down, you should pick the next person who comes along that is better than everyone that you've seen before. And if you do that, you can mathematically prove it that this is the optimal way to, uh, to end up with the chances of finding the best partner. Oh, wow. I mean, now, OK. 
This is a this is a theory that comes with caveats, though. Jennifer. I'm sort of like it doesn't work every single time. Okay. I mean, there's risks involved. Here. It is. Okay. So it, the, one of the big risks is that imagine if your absolute perfect partner appeared in that first 37% when you were kind of playing the field, right? When you're like 21 years old, the perfect match for you was there. If you're following this theory, then you just got to reject them out of sight, right? You can't you can't have them. Um, and that says you've got to get rid of them and then you'll never be able to get them back. So, I mean, there, there are risks involved. Okay. <laughs> this is so different and interesting seeing it from a mathematical <laughs> perspective. I don't think we've had anybody else seen it that way, you know? Yeah, this is interesting. Think... Tell us about your show, your new show. Ah, uh, so, my new show, it's, uh, it's called The Future mm -hmm. with Anna Fry. Um, and it's, it's, I mean, unsurprisingly, given the title, it's kind of looking forward to the future. <laughs> um, but I like to imagine if this show had been made maybe 20 years ago, um, it wouldn't be looking at hovercrafts and, like, flying cars and tinfoil hats and things. Instead, what this show is about, it's not like big, big predictions of the future. It's looking at the technology that is already there or almost there and trying to think about how it's going to change our, all of our lives, right? So 20 years ago, it would have been looking at things like social media and the impact of that on how we talk to each other, on things like privacy and mm -hmm. how, you know, being on the internet so much is going to witter away our, our, the, 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 you know, our private lives, essentially. So the topics that we're covering are things like emotion detection, right? Mm -hmm. So AI that can work out how you're feeling based on what you're doing with your face. Um, we also look at uh, lots of AI and technology for uh, people with disabilities, so like prosthetic arms and, and glasses that have subtitles, and the ways in which that's going to change everybody's lives. So interesting. You're amazing. Oh, my goodness. Thank you so much for being here, Hannah. Thank you for having this me. This is so interesting. Oh, my God. Come, you'll come back again and see us. Oh, absolutely. All right, we'll work on our math equations. The Future with Hannah Fry is streaming now on Bloomberg.com and the Bloomberg app. We'll be right back. You know our next guest as a former correspondent from The Daily Show and co-creator of Two Dope Queens. Now she stars in the new Apple TV Plus show, Shrinking. Take a look. Is she single? Because, you know, since the divorce, I've been thinking about trying some new things. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm trying to make you uncomfortable. You're very good at that. Thank you. Now get in the car. Can we play that song I like? Every morning there's a halo hanging from the corner of my girlfriend's four-post bed. I know it's not mine, but I'll see if I can use it for a weekend or a one-night stand. All right, please welcome the very funny Jessica Williams. Congrats on shrinking. Thank you. People love it. Yes. Good. It's what we need right now, you yes. know? Yes. Yes. Yeah. For those who haven't seen it, can you tell them what it's about? Yeah. Um, shrinking is a show on Apple TV yes. Plus, and uh, it's about, um, it initially starts with um, this character named Jimmy, played by Jason Siegel, who is a therapist who uh, loses his wife tragically and unexpectedly. Mm. Um, and it's his kind of process through grief is the way in. But it's a show about um, people grieving in different ways. I play the character of Gabby, and she is his coworker. She's also a therapist. And uh, I think it's a show about leaning on each other and friendships and lines being blurred and grieving in your own way. Yeah. Mm, it's so necessary. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I saw this funny clip of you singing with Harrison Ford. Yes. What, tell us, tell me about that. What was that like? Yes, um, that was really surreal, actually, because they were like, okay, if you had to sing in a car with Harrison Ford, what would you sing? And, you know, I'm a millennial. Uh, so I suggested, like, Sum 41, Fat Lip. I suggested Complicated by Avril Lavigne, uh, One Week by Bare Naked Ladies, uh, Everywhere by Michelle Branch, like, and then the last one's... Sugar Ray, because I'm a huge Sugar Ray fan. <laughs> and uh, on the day, we didn't know whether he'd know the words or not, but he knew kind of so every he word. He did. He learned it. He knew every word. Good. And the biggest thing that I was most nervous about mm -hmm. was actually just driving with him next to me, like acting like I was driving. <laughs> that is You know, like when you're typing and you know how to type and then somebody watches you type and you're like, oh, I actually don't know how to type anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, how do I spell my name? Uh, <laughs> 
And so I was like actually very stressed about driving with him. So that was probably the biggest thing was Not trying thinking, to make but sure the driving. just this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I love when people buy a home. Congratulations. Oh. Well, thank you so much. Oh my God. Thank you. I love being a millennial that in this economy was able to buy a home. That is Not a lot of millennials amazing. can do that right now, unfortunately. Oh my God. Yeah. Is, is it anything in it that you had to have? Yes. What was the um, must have? I bought my house literally like a month before the pandemic. So mm. I got super lucky. I knew I wanted to take it down to the beams. I wanted my own thing. So my house is like a really beautiful dusty pink Ooh. and like very 70s. And I really wanted a pink island. That was the biggest thing. I wanted a pink kitchen island. And I have this really funny nice. cousin who studied abroad one year, years ago, and he loves to talk about how he studied abroad. Mm -hmm. And he was like, oh, if you want pink marble, let me know. I know the heir to a marble quarry fortune. <laughs> and I was like, no way. And I followed up on it, and it was true. It was? My cousin Corbin wasn't lying. <laughs> thank cousin you, Corbin. Right. Yeah, <laughs> thank you, Corby. Shrinking is streaming now on Apple TV+. Plus. We're going to play a game with Jessica after this. We'll be right back. <laughs> Jessica Williams, we thought since you're here with us, it would be fun to play a game with the audience. Yep, it is time to play Let's Get Physical! Ta -da! Okay, so this is how it's gonna go. We're okay. going to split you guys down the middle into two teams. Team one will play with Jessica. Hello. And team two. <laughs> Y'all with me? Hi. Team J Hard, okay. Right. Now listen, right. there we go. A word will come up on the screen like dancing, and the whole team has to help us guess what it is without talking. Oh. Don't be cheating, Jessica. I won't, but okay, if you're gonna be J Hud, I'm gonna be J Willie, oh. and then this is gonna be Team J Willie. I like that. Definitely. Definitely. There you go. All right, y'all. All right. Y'all will go first, so go ahead and stand oh on up. All right, team. Remember, no cheating. Okay. Y'all ready? <laughs> Let's get 60 seconds on the clock. Let's go. Oh, walk. Oh, hair. The hair is long, flowy, mane. Oh, and we're dancing. There's a lot of scepters. Is this a scepter? Hands, rings, YMCA. Anything else? Oh, push-ups. Push-ups. What's next? Moonwalk! The moonwalk! What's next? Oh! What is what is jumping, basketball, stirring, cake, we're eating? Oh, we're eating a we're a pizza pie! Make a pizza! The swim, the diver! The, the, the back swim! I'm drowning, I'm swimming! I can't breathe! I'm underwater! Breathe! Underwater! I don't know! Underwater! Under dance, underwater dance, undercover, underwater! <laughs> The underwater marching. Pass, pass, pass. <laughs> Flute, playing the stick, playing the, oh. That was awesome. Okay. You, you did good. Thank you. All right. And you know I'm a smack talker, so. You did. <laughs> Let's see what Jay Hud can uh -oh. do. Uh-oh, uh-oh, the pressure's on us, yeah, guys. Stand I'm on a up. Smack talker, so. Are we ready, Team Jay Hud? Good luck, Jay Hud. 60 seconds on the clock. Good luck. All right. Oh, Lord, help me. Go! <laughs> Karate? Karate, chop. Karate! Hug! Yaha! Kick! What in the world are they doing? Monster! Scary! King Cole! Pass! Dancing! Oh, hula hoop! Jumping jack! Exercise, skin, washing up. You better wash up good, wash your face. Lathering up, soap. Under your arms. Cleaning up, washing up, taking a shower. I think I got the right. Painting. Waving the flag, a kite. Yes! Ha! Ha! Wait, what happened you have? Ha! Thank you so much for Thank coming you. to see about me. Thank Will you, you come back again? Of course. We're going to have a rematch one day, oh, yeah, okay? Y'all hear that? Yeah, I'm going to get you. <laughs> I'm gonna get you. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs>
If you like this video, smash that like button and subscribe to the Jennifer Hudson Show YouTube channel. Check your local listings or visit JenniferHudsonShow.com to see when you can watch full episodes in your area. And don't forget to sign up for the newsletter.